Hi, and welcome to the channel. I'm Sam, and this is the Crafty Blinders Van Build. Today, we're finishing off our cabinets. Hi, and welcome back. Today is the third and final part of my cabinet builds. So, a couple of things we've done already. We've built the frames, we've made the doors. It's now the day where we put everything together. We assemble all the products, put the locks on, put the hinges on, the hasps on, and finally finish them off and see how they look. Um, a couple of things that I've probably missed in the video that I'd like to capture now are how I secured it. Um, how I secured the frames to the actual side of the, the van. So along the back, can't really see, can we? Let's, uh, let's see if I can shed a bit of light on that. Along the back, I've secured it one, two, three, four. And the same again in this side. I have a couple of bits I need to repair. This one's got three along the top. And in all honesty, this is probably the one that we'll use the most. Um, we're going to keep light stuff up there. Um, but I can see the odd time it might have some heavy stuff. But the other point that I've probably not shown you before is it is screwed into the sea, into the roof support. So everywhere where we've got a metal strainer going across on the roof, we have a fixing point as well. So I know for sure that there's one there. So through the batten, not the furniture board, I put a screw. Now a couple of trial holes where I've missed, they need filled. But I've left them to show you exactly how I did it. This here is to pull the roof board down so I can keep the same gap all the way along. Sometimes I get a rise in the roof, like there's a little rise there, but I haven't put a screw in that yet, just to show you. So that probably need a screw in there and that'll pull the roof board down. But in all honesty, I maybe just need to back that screw off that I've got in. Because that gap is pretty consistent all the way along. It actually narrows down where I've got the screw. So we'll maybe just back that off. I think it's settled in. Another thing, the size is. So this cupboard here, this cabinet, is above the seating area. These are the sizes. It's 400 tall, 380 deep, and it's 143 centimetres wide. The kitchen one, this is secured slightly different. It's fixed in at the back only. It's carrying no weight really, it'll be cups and plates. There's nothing in the top at all. But um, yeah, this one's a little lightweight cupboard so it didn't need as much support. And there's the dimensions there. It's 40 tall, 95 wide and it's 23 deep on the bottom. It's probably around about 200 mil there where the next shelf is going to go in. I'm going to leave this one panel, I've got a blank to go in there. But this will have a shelf running right through it. Now the big lockers are the bigger lockers. So they're 400 tall, 400 deep and 172 in length. So I hope that answers a few of the questions that were in the comments for the last couple of videos. Again, it's secured at the back on the top button where we have a support. There's another one there and all the way down. So the final step for me was to install LED lighting on the bottom side of these cabinets. This is the last big job, but I think visually it will have a massive impact. We've routed out this section of the underside of the cabinet. Now we're about to install these LED ducts. So these come in metre lengths, so if you need to do a little bit longer than a metre, you need to cut a piece. So I've got enough to do six metres, and I only really needed four and a half, so plenty there. The only thing, I tried a number of different ways of holding these in. I glued them in with a hot glue gun, didn't work. I, um, I tried super gluing them in, didn't work. I was going to use double sided tape, but I thought, over the years that might that might fail so i ended up buying some very tiny screws so i'm going to put a little hole in each end and one in the middle 
that should hold it. So I've got the tiniest bit of I own. <laughs> One mil. Just pop a couple of holes in the back of these. Probably can't see what I'm doing, but it's going about an inch in. There you go. Little screw. Little screw there, there. Huh. You've got sausage fingers like mine, it's a nightmare dealing with these little screws. So you can just open them on the back. We need to zoom in a bit. Six and eight, two, four, six, two, four, six, eight. Oh my god. <laughs> These are so fine. I'll show you one in a minute. Little tip. You got something as small as that. Put one bag inside another. Don't lose them then. <laughs> so these are these tiny little pan head screws. I'll try and include a link for them in the com in the description. There it is, just click screw down. Nice. quite made my mind up yet with what LED I'm going to put in here but um, I think I'm going to put some colour change in because I've read that midges are attracted to white light but they're not attracted to blue and green and red so, if it's a hot night and you just want the van doors open, you still want to see what you what's going on, or have a bit extra ventilation, and have a bit of light, you get to sit with the door open and the lights on, just under a different colour. Don't know how true that is. If you know how true it is, let me know in the comments. Because it'd be... Nice to find out if it's a real thing or not. But anyway, multicoloured lighting, I think, and we'll be. I'd already installed this locker arrangement once. But, um, obviously, I'll have to do it again. So. What I'm doing here is just come past the edge with that. Lift a little bit so you can get your finger in. That's playing hard to, hard to get out. Eh? So, something I always do as well, got a joint here. So, when I put the second piece in, the joint will be over here, so they never overlap. Well, that's all right. That's my little mark. And always put the machine cut ends. So this comes from the factory, so I've already cut that end. My intention is 
to cut this end again. All I did there, I'll show you on this redundant piece, I break the back, score the face, and then just snaps. Easy as that. Something I always do as well, just angle the ends so you know that that is an end piece. Nearly job done. Just put some tape on so while we're fitting the cabinet we don't mark this. Once it's in position we can take this back off. As this is the final time I'll be offering up the cabinet, it's very important to make sure that it's secured properly. So I fix it in a couple of places, and then I go through the same procedure as before, checking all the dimensions, checking everything lines up, and it's exactly where it should be. Okay, it's time to start doing the nice decorative stuff. So, this is the hasp lock, whatever you want to call it, that I want to fit. Let's put it on there. To my doors. So, I've had a little jig earlier on today, had a little play about with it. As you can see, it's quite rough. Better off making the mistakes on this piece rather than the doors. So even though I made a mistake, it's still quite, well, everywhere's covered. So, anyway, that was my trial piece. This is the real thing. So I've wrote on here some numbers for myself, but it's 30 millimetres from the top to the bottom. It's 30 millimetres wide. It's 50 millimetres tall. So I'm going to drill four holes in the corners. And then I'll jigsaw that out, drop that in, screw it up, it is that simple. I've been nervous about this all day and I've had a little practice on that piece. I'm just going to crack on now. To protect my worktop, I just place an off cut of wood underneath. Then I drill the holes with a drill bit that's just slightly bigger than the jigsaw blade. Four holes in each corner, 
and now we'll just cut from each corner with the jigsaw. So you can see, it's not as square as I'd like it to be. But, in all honesty, it doesn't need to be that square. That is terrible wool. <laughs> so, I'm going to dress it up a little bit. While I was playing around with my practice piece, I decided to make these fittings really tight, really close, so in the future they wouldn't become loose and move around. Check it square. So this is the back part, so the front piece slots into there and when you pull that's the action, so we'll screw this up and go and hang the door. Just nip it up so you get a little bit of resistance and go around and give it all another little do. You've got to love that technique, haven't you? Always use your head. <laughs> I don't know what I've come looking like today either. I look like the village idiot with that hat and glasses on. Next job is putting a couple of rams in. Um, just get the kit out while we're here and show you what there is. So this piece will go on the bottom there. The ram sits that way around. And on the door we have this piece. These are 80 newton metre rams. I think they'll be ideal for the job. So let's see. Do that next. So that's 250 mil down from the top and it's 10 mil to the edge of here. So what I'm going to do, put that there, start the screw, start the hole off with the small driver. So what happened with the last one was it was just as the ram was coming down I had it there at the pin level with the 250 and I found that that was just a little bit too high so what I'm going to do this time
this mirror how I set it up on the other one which is slightly lower so it's below the 250 line I don't know if you can hear that wind but it's wild out there tonight good night for doing inside jobs so if you noticed I'm doing all this by hand because we don't want to overtake the things and strip strip the wood, hole in the wood and to be honest with you it's good every now and then just to not use flower tools I think that's rain I better go and clean the door Door closed. Right, look, it's that in that's gone in properly that's good at this time cool all right all right uh. So the pin comes through that end you know it's right when you've got that done so we want this one to sit right about here Line that up. Just that the screw off. That's just done. The first time you close your door, it's important to do it slowly to check that the ram doesn't hit its stop and that the door doesn't nip the frame anywhere. What the rams do though, is they alter the gaps. They all go right way though with that afternoon. The first thing you need to do, reset all your gaps. First time. I'm happy with that. 
just there. Excellent. Excellent. Try and get that hinge closing. Perfect. The last part of the setup is to pair the doors so they both open to the same point and don't clash with the fan surround. I'm having that. I love that. Well, all the hard work's paid off. Got two covers that I'm very happy with. So I've got to put a little a couple of rubber rubbers in here. So when the doors come down, it's actually close up against that. Just stop it from rattling when we're driving. And it can just make it sound nicer when we're closing it as well. Can't do it that can you? <laughs> So that's it, the cabinets are finished, the van of cabinets is finished. I really didn't consider how many lockers I was putting in this vehicle. I just saw a space and thought, I'll put a locker there, I'll put a locker there, I'll put a locker there, one over there. I just didn't think about it. Now I've built them, I will fill them. And if I don't fill them, Lisa will fill them. I'm Riley. <laughs> but they will get filled. Um, I hope you've enjoyed the videos. I hope I've done it justice by splitting it into three sections, three videos, because in all honesty, there's a lot of information to try and cram into a 20 minute video. You know, most of these have ended up 25 minute videos, so still a bit longer than I like to make. I like to keep it round about the 20 minute mark, but hopefully, hopefully you've enjoyed it and it's been of an advantage to you or it's helped you understand how I've got to where I got to with the build but thanks for watching again it's always a it's always a pleasure for the comments and, and the kind words that people send um, if you've got any questions or if there's another part of the van build that you want to see just drop us a line you know contact us on Facebook on Instagram or through the channel in the comments we're more than willing to help and and we're more than willing to answer your questions but hey uh, Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next episode.